Ignition sequence starts. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor and things seem to be heating up in the crypto markets. We're going to go over some of this today. We got Ripple Swell this week. I wouldn't be surprised if Real USD is announced going live this week. Um, we've got Bitcoin price taking off. The altcoin season's going to follow it. It always does. Pay attention. Um, first, let's look at Egrag Crypto. XRP has max max 70 days left to reach the final pinnacle of the breakout point. That said, within the next 15 to 30 days, I can say with a high degree of conviction that a breakout is coming. The pressure is building and it won't stay contained for long. It sure feels that way. And then this guy says October is back. We've got uh, Bitcoin crawl. I don't underestimate how significant this is. I mean, folks. Bitcoin crossed 66,000 this morning. Let's see where it is right now. But these things matter. It's uh, just below 66,000 right now. We've got a 54 cent XRP, $2.29 trillion in this market. We've got, we're having an up day and really this thing ticked up from I think like 2.25 to 2.29. Folks, at some point the real money is gonna start flowing in and like Brad Garlinghouse said, you could have this market double by the end of the year. Check this out, altcoin season imminent. We're creating a huge inverse head and shoulders. Once we break the neckline, we will go parabolic. Folks, I think anything can happen right now. Now look at this, Ray Fuentes has apparently has landed in Miami. They're building the swell sign. Swell starts tomorrow. Um, apparently, I saw a tweet where Ray said he didn't get accepted to go to swell, and then um, I saw one where he was going to the to the uh, XRP community party. But I I don't know if he ever was able to get a ticket or not. I guess we're going to find out. Securitize got a ticket. Tomorrow's swell event. Carlos Domingo, who's the CEO of Securitas, joins Graham Rodford of, Rodford of ArchX. Andrew Supek, I guess I'm not butchering your name, Andrew, of Northern Trust and James Wallace of Ripple to discuss transformational power of tokenization in the digital era. All right. And that's going to be starting tomorrow in Miami. The Ripple stablecoin tracker, my prediction is that this thing is um, one of their announcements at Swell that they're going to, at a minimum, I think they're going to announce that it's going live, you know, in the next week or so. Um, but I wouldn't be surprised if they took it live during Swell. But here is the uh, Ripple stablecoin tracker, real USD. Six million transferred. We had six million minted. 260,000 transferred, transferred. Um, so they've been testing the minting and the burning and now recently in the last few days, they started transferring the stuff. That tells me we're going live imminently. Okay, um, Donald Trump's family is, and th this is something that, that's, this is the one part of the whole Trump thing I, I, don't, I don't understand. First of all, I don't understand why the Trump family is going all in on crypto to put, I mean, they've got enough targets on their back. Now, knowing that Gary Gensler is like everything's a security, now you're going to start a crypto company and issue a security, like inviting another agency who's in bed with all these other bad guys to come after you? I don't get it. I also don't get the buy Trump watches, Trump shoes and all that. I know that Trump's always been a businessman and a marketing guy, but to me, I don't, I don't understand it. I, I, I would have thought that he would have put all that on the, on the back burner and focused on the election. That's the part of Donald Trump I don't get. 
Well, here's an, here's some guys talking about this world liberty thing. So really, this was all inspired by the ideals and the vision of Donald J. Trump, which is to bring DeFi to the mainstream and to make these financial opportunities accessible to everyone, while at the same time supporting the U.S. economy and the U.S. dollar's role as the global reserve currency. And, you know, I think Steve touched upon this a little bit, but through stable coins, we can, in fact, make the U.S. dollar not only strong, but make it safe as the world's reserve currency for the next 50, 100 years. And anybody who's on here probably understands stable coins and how they work when they're pegged to the U.S. dollar. They're backed by U.S. treasuries. So they truly are one to one. They are, you know, they are non-speculative. What you're doing is I keep talking about it. What you're doing when you create when you get these private companies to create stable coins, government commission stable coins approved is you're creating it's like creating all these little countries that can buy your treasuries all day long. So you can you can pat give them like in Ripple's case or anybody's case, Circle, anybody. You the gov think about this. The government says, okay, so we're worried about China and Iran dumping our our treasury bond, not Iran, but China and Russia and all these countries dumping our U.S. treasury bond. So what we do is we get all we we use Tether as a testing ground, offshore. Then once once the test work, proves to work, then we get we do the same thing. We let private companies have a license to to create a stable coin, but they have to buy they have to buy treasuries one for one. They're, they have to buy a bunch of treasuries, have a bunch of cash, and it's pumping up your treasury market and all you you've in essence created all these private companies that are like having all these countries that are sucking up all those treasury bonds that everybody else says they want to sell thus making the dollar stronger see how this works they're pegged to the dollar they're always redeemable for a dollar and we really believe that that's the best way to make america great through crypto yeah, it's not bitcoin strategic reserve asset it's stable coins is what saves the day. It's not through speculating on risky assets. It's by getting people to transact in currency that's backed by treasuries and that have a very uh, stable, obviously stable coin, but very stable value that we all know. I mean, nobody's going to walk into a store and figure out like, OK, my groceries are 200 and 30 American dollars. How many Satoshis is that? Right. Like and then. It just doesn't make sense. We transact in dollars. Stable coins are one of the most important inventions in crypto and also one of the pieces of crypto that is going to really bring our economy and our country to the forefront of the world, not just of crypto, but of the world. There you have it. Okay, check this out. This is Kathy Wood with Cointelegraph. Are you still confident in that $1 million target for Bitcoin? Yes, wow. actually, the more uncertainty and volatility there is in the global economies, uh, uh, the, the more uh, our confidence increases in Bitcoin. Um, and, and one of the reasons is we've just been through an inflationary scare. We think it was very much supply chain driven and, uh, and, and uh, Bitcoin was, is a hedge against Okay, and then we have this. The, remember, this is the guy from Bitnomial, and he said the SEC, they, they were having to sue the SEC because they wanted XRP, um, I'm drawing a blank, XRP futures is what they were trying to do, and the SEC came in and said, no, if you do that, we're going to come after you, even though there was a court ruling that XRP was not a security. And so the CEO of Bitnomial had tweeted this and he said, the SEC will not accept their loss, forcing us to bring this suit against them. And it reminded me, that I saw this video going around, it was a video I had put out a long time ago. And I said, an SEC that doesn't accept court rulings, is, except for the ones they like, or, is dangerous. It's not good enough to fire against them. There must be repercussions for, his, for this law, or this lawlessness will, will be done again. Hester Pierce sure would be nice to, sure sure wish we had an SEC whistleblower. This is Gary, when he's basically saying, a, a reporter's asking him the question, he's basically saying, well, you know, if we don't, it depends on, we have to like the court ruling. 
And so nothing any court would say would change your mind on that. <laughs> That's the whole point. If the court decides it does change your mind because your mind, it, it, your objective as an SEC commissioner is not for you to decide what the law is. It's for you, if the, if the courts tell you what the law is, then you abide by it. And he's basically saying no. I wish something a court could say which would actually um, bring the compliance sooner. But this was a field that was built as a global field. So a lot of it's outside of the U.S. And we have very... So basically what Gary has done is... If, if it's a court ruling that he likes, like a pro-Bitcoin thing, then he'll go along with that. But if he doesn't like the court ruling, then he's behind the scenes trying to threaten companies and ignore the court ruling, like he did in the Ripple case. Check this out. Eleanor Terrett says, new, the so-called revolving door at the SEC has been particularly cyclical this year. Handful of not notable officials leaving. All these people have left. Most of them went to advise on crypto. Now, in DAIXRP.com, there's some island guy news that I think was missed. I didn't see it until this morning, but I think it's significant because it sure does feel like all the dominoes are falling. And have you noticed something? Every single prominent person to a man, to a man, every if, if, if they were someone who was involved with that island guy or someone who was involved with the party guy of recent days, they're pro Kamala. Go figure. Why do you think? I'll tell you what I think of it. Why I think. I don't think there's a question about it in DAIXRP.com. I'm the digital asset investor. I'm not an investment advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe. Hit the like button. Tell your friends and family. Here we go.